Remember back in 9-11 when all these uh, planes hit uh, the towers, the Twin Towers in New York City? And there was this tremendous uh, caving in of all kinds of toxic chemicals that were all over the area in New York. And the authorities told us, don't worry about it. It's not toxic. You'll probably be fine. And our firefighters and, and other rescue workers went to the scene, risked their lives. And we know they developed some things that we kind of expected, things like asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Uh, and uh, some had P PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. One of the things we feared that might be a problem is an increased risk of cancer, all kinds of cancers. And indeed, a study now is out, published by The Lancet, uh, the journal from England, uh, that shows that the risk of getting cancer during the first seven years after uh, the 9-11 event was 19% higher, and that's for all kinds of cancers. Wow, big number. Are these people getting reimbursed for their cancers they're developing? No. There's, there's nobody who's looking at this and saying, we should stand up for our troops or our firefighters uh, because uh, we don't have to pay for it because we don't think that was related in some way. Really. It's the same thing as, as what happened in, in the Gulf War. It has happened in Iraq. People coming back with all kinds of toxic syndromes, things like chronic fatigue syndrome, and we're wondering, why is there such a high incidence of that? And yet, not really reimbursing our poor vets for the conditions that they get. It's a really sad scenario when we're that way. We should always have support for people who are risking their lives, particularly for other Americans who are in desperate situations. Look at some of the things they're exposed to, some of the polycyclic arom uh, aromatic hydrocarbons and polychlorinated biphenyls and dioxins, all chemicals that we know can cause cancers of all kinds, not just in the lung. And what can we do to prevent these things? Once the exposure is there and it's, and it's happening and, and the diseases are following it, the asthma, the chronic obstructive lung disease, the cancers, we're marching on a way that's hard to stop. Still, we could stop smoking. We could, we could reduce our stress. We could do more in the way of exercise. We can avoid, try and avoid further uh, exposures to toxic materials that are in the environment. We can eat a healthy diet and try to take in more antioxidants and maybe supplement with some of the antioxidant vitamins like CE, beta carotene, etc., because it may do a lot to try and reduce some of these uh, uh, diseases from progressing. That's the least that we should be doing on our own, but we should have the support of the government. Workers who put their lives out and, and do these kinds of things are heroes. They're American heroes. And if this is the kind of way that we're going to be answering and rewarding them, it sure does leave a lot of uh, bitter taste in my mouth about what's happening here. Why aren't we taking our, our, our responsibilities as American citizens? How can we let the government get away with not doing that? It's the same thing as in Iraq or in, in Afghanistan or any war that we've had in the past. It seems like the people that go over that enlist doing their jobs, there's mayhem, they come back with PTSD and all these other syndromes that they have, and nobody's standing by them. So I think it's time for uh, American people to do something, to stand up for these poor people who are now suffering with an increased risk for cancer, and do something that the, the human health and services will respond in some way to try and give coverage, because that's the very least. I mean, once you've got a cancer, you've got a major problem. The least we can do is try to support these people while they're going through the misery of a cancer.